This midday, we welcome Professor Goran Hayden, a distinguished professor emeritus of political science at the University of Florida in the United States of America, who is attending a four-day international conference on the need to factor in African traditions in the continent's quest for economic growth. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Well, uh, how urgent is it for Africans to shift from the colonial legacy and uh, placing their own cultures at the heart of development issues? Well, I, I'm not so sure that it's, first of all, a matter of urgency. It is important that it happens, but it's going to be a process that's likely to take many years. So in some, some respects, I'm afraid that forcing something like this is not necessarily going to pay off. It mm -hmm. should come more in line with demand for this kind of change. And it's coming both. national level and national levels in, in African countries. Practically, how can African governments go about this? Well, uh, first of all, I think they have to respect or include in their own policy making uh, actors that typically so far have been, uh, if not marginalized, not as much utilized for purposes of setting policies. I'm thinking about both the civil society in this country, uh, traditional majesties and traditional representatives, as well as the private sector. Let's take the case of Cameroon. Many Cameroonians feel that very little is done to preserve the country's uh, history. Uh, how much can this affect economic growth in Cameroon? Well, uh, I think that with uh, preservation of a cultural heritage like the one here in Cameroon, you will find that the country has sense of pride and sense of self-esteem mm -hmm. that I think is very important for the African countries generally to have when it comes to interacting with the rest of the world, which is becoming, as uh, you all know, uh, increasingly dominated by economic thinking and globalization pressures. For you, is it a strength or a weakness to have 250 ethnic groups in one country that has a dual colonial heritage? Well, it's difficult for me to answer, frankly speaking, but I think uh, it's a challenge, and I believe that in many respects uh, what, what Cameroon has is a very pride, a proud heritage. Mm -hmm. But when I said earlier on that it's dangerous to force things uh, through, say, political interventions, mm -hmm. uh, if you take the case, for instance, of the Democratic Republic of Congo, you find that uh, essentially the situation has developed into uh, many languages uh, still in existence, but two languages, Swahili and Lingala, mm -hmm. being essentially lingua franca. Mm -hmm. And that has essentially evolved over time. It's not something that has been politically determined. And I think Cameroon's uh, way forward is probably likely to be more successful if it takes into consideration the experience of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Well, you cited the example of the DRC. Has culture played a key role in the growth of the BRICS, for example, or even the Asian Tigers? Well, uh, culture is probably not as prominent, but uh, and they are so different, the countries that we're talking about in the BRICS community. I mean, you have uh, all the countries that are uh, in, in many respects different, mm -hmm. uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, mm -hmm. India, China, and South Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, to that extent, I can't imagine that culture is such an important factor as, for instance, uh, economic uh, integration or economic uh, trade or among these countries. Let's part on this. How important is it for a country to have a sense of national pride and national identity? Well, that's very important. Uh, I think it's, as I said, it's the question of having national pride and, uh, and self-esteem. Self and, and that uh, is often the basis uh, for sustainable development. And you can, in that sense, quote the examples of Vietnam and China and other countries with a proud heritage that have really been able to develop uh, to a large extent because of that cultural legacy. Would we say once that is achieved, the country can then look 
as uh, one people in one direction? Yeah, and of course, if you are, have a common heritage, you can afford to, a diverse, to diversify. Mm -hmm. There is always diversity and unity, and you know, to that extent, uh, people can afford to be, uh, in many respects, able to do things uh, without fear, because there is a common understanding underlying all the actions that people take. Well, thank you very much, Professor Goran Hayden, for accepting to be guest of the Midday News. It's worth uh, reminding uh, viewers that you're a distinguished professor emeritus of political science and former director of the Center for African Studies at the University of Florida at Gainesville, USA, and that you visited the University of Nairobi in April 2013. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Okay. The indomitable INSCs of Cameroon have intensified training sessions in Edmonton, Canada, ahead of their round of 16 knockout game against China on Saturday. China is the fastest.